Hello everyone and welcome to our fifth virtual tasting. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you don't know, my name is Aaron Ikanian. I'm the general manager here at the Vinbin in Marlboro, uh, two locations in Marlboro, Southboro and Hopkinton. Um, this is the fifth tasting we've done. Uh, before we get going on this, uh, I do want to take a couple minutes to just thank some people, shout out some people and, and do a little uh, plugging. So. The first people group I want to shout out is the Marlboro Regional Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they were our partners for this event and helped get the word out to their members and, and to the community. And if you, if you aren't familiar with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, I, would, I would suggest checking out their website, check out their, their in, uh, social media. They're doing a lot of great things in town and uh, we're happy to be working on, on this project and others with them. Uh, the second group I want, to, I want to acknowledge is you guys. Um, I was struck as I was putting these orders together for this fifth virtual tasting by how many names in the list that have been with us for each of these tastings. Um, it's, it's amazing and, and if not all five, some have been two, three, four of them. And when we started doing these back, you know, at the beginning of the, of the shutdown, we didn't know what to expect and we keep getting kind words and encouragement about doing these tastings. So it's, it means a lot during these times when businesses you know, even like the Vinbin is str are struggling a little bit with certain areas. Uh, it means a lot to have some consistency, and our customers are really showing us a lot of a lot of appreciation. And we appreciate you. Um, if you've done these tastings before, you know I like to just take a little bit of time to shameless plug for our business. So there's a lot of stuff going on here um, in Marlboro and and South Bro's closed temporarily. Still, we're, we're working towards opening that store. If you're a South Bro customer, we'll be there. Uh, we're working on it. Um, but in Marlboro, in our cafe, we have our weekly specials and some and a new one to talk about. Uh, on Tuesdays, we start sort of our specials of the week with our chicken parm night, which is amazing. Uh, Chef Hannah and Mike put a killer chicken parm sandwich together. Um, and you can pre-order those all day. Uh, on two, on, that's on Tuesdays. On Wednesdays, we do grilled cheese night with my wife, Amanda, who makes some really great grilled cheeses, some of the best in the world, in my opinion. Um, and you can pre-order those all day. And on Thursday, we do burger night. And burger night's a great one too. Weather permitting, we bring the grill out. Um, usually, she and Chef Hannah comes up with a different burger every week featuring some really great different ingredients. Different, you know, sometimes you put roasted peaches and roasted corn and all kinds of different ingredients and toppings. Uh, and those are, those are fantastic too. Uh, our newest one that we came out with a couple of weeks ago is on Saturdays. On Saturdays, we do a special wine and cheese pairing plate. Uh, so you can come in by yourself or with your with a friend or with your husband or wife and you can have a cheese plate on our patio or in the in the dining room here um, and you can you can have a cheese plate for one or two for two and get some wine with it. And we usually feature a specific wine outside of our normal house wine uh, selections. It's a wine we pick to pair with a certain cheese or with the array of cheeses that we have. And that's on Saturdays and that's all day. Now in addition to the food specials, um, and I know we send a lot of emails, guys. I, I we, we do, and I don't. I, we don't like to pepper you with emails, but we like to think that at least our emails we think carry some value. So you might have noticed if you read these emails that every single day with each of these food items, we are featuring a wine. So on Tuesday nights with chicken parm, we feature a wine to pair with it at a discount. Same thing on Wednesdays with grilled cheeses. Thursdays with burger night, and. You know, so you can buy those too. You don't have to get the food if you want to get the wine on a discount. That's great too. Um, so we're trying to do that. Also look out for Wednesdays. Where we have the last couple of weeks come out with a new promotion on Wednesdays. We call Wine Wednesdays. Uh, a great you know, alliteration. Um, and that's usually a bundle of two or three wines at a tremendous discount. Um, I think the last two weeks have been at least 20% off, if not more. Uh, and you can pre-order those as well. And, and pick them up when you want. Or we even offer delivery if you get up to the $50 mark. Um, and these are, you know, so we're just trying to throw a bunch of stuff at you basically um, to keep you guys well, well fed and well drunk during the pandemic. Um, so like I said, just keep, keep a lookout for those um, and check our website out too. You can order online for um, cases of wine and, and the Bacchus specials on Monday mornings. So now that we got all the promotion out of the way, Let's get to drinking and eating, because that's what we're here to do. Um, 
we're, per, before we do that, let's go through what we have in the bag today and what we're going to be going through. So for your food items, you've got a little square of the Milton Creamery um, cheddar. This is what we call the Vin Bin House cheddar, but it's what is really called the old style cheddar from Milton Creamery. You have the Bon Bouche goat cheese from Vermont Creamery. Amazing. These are like ridiculous. I can't wait to get into that. Maybe I already did. Um, you have your Trezor crackers, just beautiful crispy wafers. And then for wines, we've got the Petit Chat, nice little French white wine. And we have our two selections from the Amy June Winery out in Paso Robles. Um, we have the Sagacious one, and we have the Petit Verdot. Petit Verdot. Okay. This is kind of a kind of a hodgepodge of items today, kind of with in mind having maybe a long weekend or a, a trip away where you can kind of have a wine for different all different situations um, and a cheat and just you know some nice versatile cheeses to match with just about everything but the wine we're going to start with today is the white and that's the petite chat with a cute little cat on the front of it okay so this is kind of a fun little white blend this is something that um, out of the languedoc roussillon region which we've covered in the past is the largest wine growing region in france um, we've we've had a ton of wines like this over the years uh, if you're Vin Bin veterans, you might have seen wines like uh, the White Chicken uh, or the Domaine de Puy. <clears throat> and these are just these really nice country white blends that kind of versi are versatile and go with everything. Uh, this one is a, a kind of nice sort of Southern Rhone blend of Grenache Blanc, uh, Marsan, Roussin, and there's a little Vermentino in here too, which is kind of unique. It's a, more known for an Italian um, Italian ap application uh, than, than a French but um, this is just a it's a very versatile little blend you can if you pour a little out um, you see that it's got actually a very pretty little a pretty straw color to it very light straw what what makes this wine really interesting and I think what sets it sets it apart is you may have heard of a term uh, a term for white wine a lot of times in Chardonnay called malolactic fermentation or mallow you might just hear someone say so what what happens in mallow is when these is when mallow malolactic fermentation happens is the tart these tart malic acids in wine it converts to a softer uh, a softer sort of lactic acid the same thing you find in milk and what it adds what it reduces is acidity and it, and it makes a creamier buttery more uh, texture and flavor like you'd see in a Chardonnay so in this wine they block that from happening so they can do that a lot of different ways. They can add an enzyme. Uh, they can, and there's, there's a few different ways they can do that. But the reason they do it is because they don't want this wine to be creamy and to be rich and buttery. They want this wine to have that bright, snappy, citrusy, really refreshing, um, refreshing palate. And, and you'll see that when we try it here. Let's give it a little, well, first let's swirl it a little bit because that's what we do because we're professionals. And even on the nose, I get tons of citrus zest that really, right, that bright sort of oily skin of the citrus, um, and just in a super aromatic, very lime, a lot of lime. And then there's also a really interesting little slate, sort of like right after a rainstorm when you go outside on the pavement and you can smell that, that hot, uh, wet pavement, that's kind of get that stony nose. This is like one of my favorite styles. I really, I really enjoy those those notes yeah full of acidity especially on the finish almost spicy it almost has that heat to it that can it almost makes you feel like you ate something that had a little pepper in it love that uh, it's 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 snappy on the palate a lot more citrus and even on on sort of the mid palate you get some really juicy peach and stone fruit it's really like it's got a lot of layers to it for a for a pretty simple inexpensive style of wine there's really some nice layered flavor um, you can drink this with a lot of different things if you're doing dinner you can do grilled chicken seafood anything any light summer dinner would be fine um, but to me this is just your ultimate quaffing wine this is just an every every day all day sipping wine um, really 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 excellent uh, really really enjoying this one um, 
Now, when we look at cheese for this, um, it's, this would go with a lot of different cheeses because of that acidity. Anything, any really fatty cheese, any brie, any soft cheese, even a cheddar, anything before like the dryness of a Parmesan. I wouldn't do it with that because that's a little too, too dry, not as fatty. You need something fatty so this can kind of clean the palate out. Uh, but we're going to look for cheese at the Bon Bouche, the Vermont Creamery. Okay, really interesting cheese here. Um, this is a, a pretty traditional uh, Vermont cheese for you'll see in lots of uh, high-end grocery stores, high-end cheese shops like us. It's consistent, really delicious. Vermont Creamery is a staple of New England cheese making and really cheese making in the United States in general. Um, this is uh, Bon Bouche is French for tasty little bite, which kind of fits this perfectly. It's a flagship cheese for Vermont Creamery. So it's a pasteurized 100% goat's milk. What, what they do with this is they sort of uh, have these soft curds, they ladle it into the molds, and they sprinkle it with ash. That's the little gray, you can even you can see that little, the little grayness on the top, okay? That's not mold or anything, that's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, that's ash, it's vegetable ash. One of my favorite things in the store is to have a cheese like this and have someone ask me, what do you mean ash? You mean like burned up ash? Like, yeah, burned up ash. And they do that for a couple different reasons. Uh, in this particular case, you know, you'll see a lot of goat cheeses like this, a lot of little, little teeny goat cheeses, bell-shaped ones, pyramid-shaped ones, or round ones like this, that use that. And, and what they're actually doing is making a surface on the cheese that is more, believe it or not, more conducive and more hospitable to the desired amount of rind and mold that they want on the outside of the cheese. And it actually is also, it also can, it can create a, uh, it can neutralize acidity in, in the cheese so they can actually find a better balance with what they're trying to show you and what, what the flavors they want. So it's a, it's a kind of a, an ancient technique. It is a, there's a famous cheese that you may have seen through us called Morbier. And Morbier is a more creamy, harder French cheese that has a layer of ash running through the middle. And kind of the way they, what they did with that cheese is they would milk it, to, they would sort of milk, do two milkings in a day. And in the morning, they would fill the bottom of the mold of, for cheese, but it wouldn't be enough to fill the whole thing. They'd have to come back at night to milk again. So to preserve it and keep the bugs away, they would sprinkle ash on top of it and it would keep, keep bugs away. And then they'd come back and do another milking, fill, finish it. And by the end of the cheese making process, there's a line of ash in the middle. And it's really pretty, it's really striking. Um, so with this cheese, I mean, I'm cutting into this guy and this is gorgeous, okay? There, there's two, two types, two ways to eat this particular cheese. There, you can eat this cheese really, really young and it's very firm and it's, it's flavorful, um, but it's, it's not super strong, it's more approachable and mild and it's got a more, a more sort of bright white paste to it. So this particular version of this cheese is seen a little more a little more cave aging, and it is runny, it's stinky, it's pungent, it's got this really ultra rich creamy texture to it. Um, I mean, even if you can if you're seeing it at home, but if you can see it through this camera here, um, I mean, it's it's just gorgeous. And you put it on one of your little French crackers here, and just dig it. I mean, it's just one of those soft cheeses that fills your mouth with flavor and into your nose. It smells on the outside like it's going to be a sticky feet cheese, but even at its age state here, the palate is has a little earthiness to it, but it still has brightness. It still has citrus of classic goat cheese. So when you're when you're having a nice bright citrusy white wine like this and you can clean that off your palate, it's a perfect match. Mm. They go together perfectly. Uh, this is a really great cheese. This cheese. I mean, you guys are gonna cut into this cheese at home, I think, and you're gonna say, oh my God, this is gonna be really scary. This is, looks really runny. Is this okay? I'm telling you, this is how I prefer to eat this cheese. This is how a serious, serious cheese maker and serious cheese eater wants to eat this cheese. Wow, delicious. Um, let's just briefly talk about 
the crackers that we did today. Um, I know we don't have to go like, we don't have to like, just not cracker talk. We don't have to go like deep into this, but these are the tra Trezor's crackers. Um, this is my favorite cracker in the store at the moment. They have beautiful texture. They have that nice waffly sort of outside, so it can actually hold on to some of the runnier cheeses and don't, they don't slide off. And it's, it's just that really perfect balance of layers of crispiness, but it's sturdy enough to hold up to a cheese when you want to smear it on. Um, and I'm not a big fan of flavored crackers. I, I like a plain cracker for almost everything. Very, very rarely do I reach for an herb or a, a spicier cracker or a seeded or even a whole wheat. I like just a nice plain cracker because to me the cracker exists so that I can get the cheese from my hand to my face. And that's why I have it. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed the white. Now, let's get on to the two reds. So this is an interesting project that we've found called Amy June Winery. Now, we see lots of California wine throughout um, the year. We taste, uh, Rick and I taste California wine at least weekly with our wine vendors and we like to say that we taste a lot of bad wine. We drink a lot of bad wine so you don't have to and we do, trust me. And the California wine market for the last couple of years has been producing a ton of wine. There's been so much wine and not enough and, and so much wine to move and not enough places to take it. So we get wine samples sent to us even in the mail almost weekly. Um, things showing up we've never seen or heard of. We get emails out of nowhere asking us to buy pallets of this wine and all this. So for, for something to jump out at us from California, it has to be really special. So we, when Rick started talking about Amy June wines, he, he had made a connection um, with the owner of Amy June and had been sort of talking with him for, uh, for a long time, almost a full year, to try to figure out how to get these wines to us because we tried that we he sent us samples and we really loved we loved them they were delicious and he's got a really interesting story of being in all organic production almost no low to absolutely no sulfites we've been talking a lot uh, in our circles lately about natural wines and organic wines and things produced you know in a natural state and these are about as close to that as you get um, there's nothing added to these there's there's almost no um, no pesticides, almost no sulfite. So this is just nat This is just literally what happens when you ferment grapes it's, and, and take care of them in barrel. This is what it tastes like. No manipulation at all. And this is a gentleman named Gary who buys his grapes from very elite sort of micro farms. They grow very, very little grapes, all organically, like I said. They really care about it, very family owned operations. Um, and he, he makes very small amounts of wine. You'll see on the front of these wines, uh, for instance, on the Sagacious One, which is going to be, the, I'm sorry, for the, uh, on the Petit Verdot, which is going to be the first wine we're going to try, they only made 76 cases of this wine. 76 cases. Such a, that's a tiny, tiny amount. Uh, if you think about California wines, other places are making, you know, 100,000 cases of wine more. Um, so 76 cases is almost nothing. Um, so anyways, we started talking to him and, and he agreed to send us wine. And we are now the only, the only place in Massachusetts that has Amy June wines. Uh, and we're going to be the only place that has them for quite a while, for, for as long as we can keep that going. Uh, we've gone through quite a bit of them already. We've done a couple specials with them, but we have not been able, uh, because of COVID, to feature them in a tasting setting. So we're kind of excited to do that now. The first wine we're going to start start with is the Petit Verdot. Now, that's this one here with the little guy. That's on. Now, some of you may have not ever had, or maybe I should say, haven't heard of Petit Verdot. Uh, you've probably had it because it's a it's a it's an immensely popular blending grape, but not um, a super popular grape to make on its own. It actually can be kind of difficult to do that. Um, in its natural sort of state, it's a grape that can it's a grape that can produce wine that is tannic and rough and hard. It's a it's a big grape, offers lots of flavor, but also a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of tannic acid. So you get that really like astringent texture in your mouth, and it's not always easy to, to work with as a, as a signature wine. So when we we were really excited to try this because it was very different. So what he does to sort of 
mold this wine the way he wants it to taste is a couple things. One, these are really old vines. So these are th these are vines that have been growing a long time. They've matured. They're not young. They have they have they've been weathered a little bit. He even says on the back of this wine that these vines are getting maybe almost to the point where this is this could be the last vintage he gets from them, um, which is kind of interesting and kind of sad because we really like this wine. Um, so he, yeah, that's one thing he does. The other thing he does with these wines, which is really cool, is the amount of barrel aging he does. The Petit Verdot has it, it was aged in barrel for 40 months, which is a long time. Think about how long 40 months is. Think about how long the last five and a half months have been and think of 40 months, okay? So 40 months in barrel has done a ton for this wine to soften the edges of it, mellow it out, and let the flavors come through. And this is the kind of wine that I opened this about, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour ago. And I can already see the changes in it. I can already smell even deeper aromas to it. And it's very berry forward on the nose. It's very lush and fruit forward. It also has a lot of, like, of a really nice, pretty leather coat kind of, kind of aroma to it. It's very nice. Um, it's got a viscous, thick sort of texture, even in the glass, you can roll it around. It's not, it's very, very rich. It's not watery at all. <clears throat> Let's give it a try, shall we? Yeah, I mean, having this wine open for 40 minutes or so has done, has done a lot. When you guys are doing this at home, try that. You should pour a little bit into a glass of your reds and maybe just set them aside and come back to it, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes after you try it. Because on the palate, this is luxurious and sort of soft like a, like an old, like a, like a comfy sweater. And it's really coats your palate. Um, on the, it's got a nice spiciness to it. You do get some warmth. You get a little pepper, a little bite, and there's some tannin to it. It's not a very, it's not a wimpy wine by any means, but it's, it's not like a Petit Verdot that is younger and, and treated wrong, which would strip the varnish off your walls. It could, you know, it would be staining your teeth. This is a little more delicate. Lots of that black fruit, uh, a little to that nice spiciness. Very nice red, very versatile red for grilling. I'd do this with barbecued anything on the weekends. Mm. Wow, that's, uh, that's showing pretty good. So that's a, that's a really interesting wine from, from them. Um, we're gonna be working with this for as long as we can. Hopefully he can get at least a little bit more out of it. Uh, now let's talk about the cheese. So we have one cheese that, we're gonna, that we think should pair with both reds. Um, and it's actually a cheese you could pretty much put with anything and be happy. Uh, this is the Milton Creamery Old Style Cheddar. Now you might see this in our store. We, kinda, we call it the Vin Bin House Cheddar. And we call it that because it's like the it's just the most approachable, easy eating cheese in the case, but also packs a lot of flavor. Uh, we talked about Milton Creamery back, uh, I think, in our first virtual tasting. We did their Prairie Breeze Cheddar, which is the sort of big brother to this one. Um, and we talked about how they're a uh, kind of a hybrid of a couple of families got together to create this farm that in their Amish and Mennonites. And they decided in, I think, the early 90s, they were going to start producing cheese. They saw the business was really good and thought they should get into it. But they have a lot of really deep-rooted values from their religious beliefs. So one, they have a lot of things they like to do. They only buy from family farms. Um, There's actually some sort of interesting notes um, that they are they're buying from only family farms. Every So every farm they buy their cheese their milk from is within 30 miles of, of where they are um, and every single milking is handled by a family member in the farms that they buy from so like everything is super super intimate between what they do um, they don't buy from any families that have herds of over over 120 cows so everything is small production painstakingly sourced and that's how you get the best cheese okay that's how you get the best anything Okay? If you put this much work into any item that you're going to eat, it's going to taste better. And when we look at a cheddar like this, this is like just, first of all, really nice and beautifully crumbly. It just sort of comes apart in your fingers. And 
it's got the same notes of the bigger brother the prairie breeze that those same sweet nutty you know really um creamy texture to it but it's just dialed down a little bit just to make it a little more approachable and it doesn't have because it's not ages long it doesn't have that crystallization which sometimes you want sometimes you don't sometimes i don't want that so i like the creaminess of it and it's really just sort of carries it this is a super versatile cheese uh, you could do this cheese this is a grilled cheese cheese this is a mac and cheese cheese this is a everyday cheese you could have this you know this is a cheese that can go from your kids plate all the way to your plate because it's that sophisticated in flavor but very approachable um just a really wonderful cheese from easily our favorite um our favorite producer of cheese which is the milton creamery in iowa and just a word on cheddar so we get cheddar is the most popular cheese we we get asked for and it's funny because people kind of i think this, they think just cheddar is the cheese right so cheddar is refers to one refers to the, the little village where it was invented in england somerset but it's also the process cheddaring is a process and the way they sort of create a cheddar is so when the curds are separated from the way they chop them up really small they cut the curds up small and they stack them on top of each other and they press them down in molds and what they'll do is then take another batch and press it down on top of that and another one on top of that so they're compacting this cheese so from what that does is a couple of things it expels moisture which can concentrate the flavor and it creates that really it helps create that crumbly texture which you see on this cheese when you just like slightly bend it and it just crumbles apart okay so cheddar is is a cheddaring is a process we can get cheddars from you know goat sheep cow any milk uh and from and cheddars are made almost everywhere cheese is made now um in the world so kind of interesting process okay last wine of the day and it's a powerhouse man this is a serious bug all right this is the amy june winery sagacious one this was the first wine that we tried from uh, Amy June, and this is kind of what hooked us in to, to what they were doing. Uh, it's a really nice Bordeaux-style blend. So you've got your 27% Cabernet, 40% of the Petit Bordeaux, and then 33% Merlot. Um, those are all traditional Bordeaux grapes. And Rick had a nice comment on this wine when we first, I think he first sent an email out, that he... Uh, he says this is the cabin Merlot or the steak of this wine, but that the Petit Verdot is the pepper and the spice. And that's a good, that's a really good sort of uh, way to look at it. You know, Cabernet and Merlot are, are sort of the traditional big brothers. They're always present and present in these kind of blends. And the Petit Verdot is what adds, is what makes it different. And what makes it more, makes it unique. Uh, this is another wine that he has put in barrels for almost 40 months, 38 months on this one. Uh, to soften the edges on it, but there's still power in this wine. Uh, also, just like all his wines, unfined, unfiltered. So when you pour this out, okay, this is uh, really interesting. This has a very like murky brown, almost like root brick color, and you can't really see through it sometimes. It's got, and when you get to the bottom of this, you're gonna find, a, I'm sure you'll find a, a ton of sediment. That's okay, that's natural. He left it in there because he wants to. Um, so this is all just no sulfites, all native yeast. This is basically a raw, natural production of wine. This is putting, you know, pressing grapes, putting the juice in a barrel, and, and you know, seeing what happens to it. And and what happened was some really awesome wine. This is really old world rustic flavor. It almost reminds me of the Amarone style of or the Repasso style, where you get the, they sort of dry the grapes on mats and then press them, because you get this really intense, sort of mature fruit, this figgy, mm, figgy sort of raisiny intensity to it. Um, really aromatic, almost port-like without the sweetness, you know? And then one big note I get on the nose, which I really enjoy in, in wine, is I, I, I smell olive, black olives, that meaty, briny, um, sort of marinated olive. Mm. Now on the palate, some of those flavors come through that mature, older fruit note, but actually, 
it's brighter on the palate. And, and, and the, no, the nose and the palate kind of mis, the nose kind of misleads you a little bit. The fruit is really present. It's got a lot of liveliness to it. And this and it's got a lot of it's a 13, 2013, so it's got some age on it too. But very youthful. Um, you know, juicy, juicy black fruit, that dark red, like a black cherry plum. Uh, a lot of acid on the finish, a lot of that, a lot of acidity, a lot of tannin, a lot of grip, a lot of structure. I'm spitting, but I'll, I'm, I'm, I'll drink some after. Um, so this is your powerhouse kind of red blend. You got ribeyes on the grill, you go with this. Uh, ribs. You know anything barbecue with a sauce, with like a barbecue sauce, would be delicious. Uh, if you're if it's raining and you're stuck inside, you know any a meatloaf. Like I'm thinking a meatloaf with this would be really nice. But you definitely want something hearty, something with some body and richness, um, and that and that's kind of where you want to go with a red like this. Uh, these are all I think three super cool wines, very very unique. Each one kind of offers something different. So I hope that you guys all enjoyed our fifth virtual tasting uh, I enjoyed tasting with you and um, I hope to do some more of these if you have any suggestions on um, some things you'd like to see from us in these tastings if maybe you want us to feature beer or maybe you want us to maybe do a liquor tasting or uh, it sounds kind of fun or something maybe a, a different style of wine you'd like to see us use we're very open to it um, you can email email me directly at Aaron at the vinbin.com uh, to let me know what you think and um, that's uh, oh, oh one more thing please if you uh, I'd love to see pictures we love to see pictures of your setups so I love to see how everyone does this at home and if you if you please take some pictures tag us either on Instagram or on Facebook um, or send just send them to us directly we don't you know however you want to send it to us and the one we like the best we're gonna give you a, give a prize this week okay um, and it's it's just uh, yeah I, I like to see how people enjoy themselves with these tastings so with that I'll leave you to it uh, please stay safe please stay healthy and have a great night